Hi. My name is Derek Willis. I work at the New York Times. And uh, the important, let's get the important stuff out of the way first. Yes, I do get to work with Nate Silver. And yeah, that's as cool as it sounds. <laughs> I was actually thinking about Nate when I was talking, trying to get a title for this presentation. Um, and the original title was something like this. Um, so uh, I'm not going to talk about Bayesian thinking, though, uh, or the theorem. I want to talk about taking an entrenched journalistic practice and turning it on its head to find some better stories. This is the Tickler file, or at least an approximation of the Tickler file. And if you've been in a newsroom for any length of time, you've probably seen it. It contains a calendar of dates of things that we expect to happen, and then we write about them. Uh, it's not a terrible thing, but, um, uh, well, uh, it leads to terrible things. Such as, every January 1st or 2nd, every year, the Washington Post, my hometown paper, writes a story that can be described as the year in murder. <laughs> every year! Now, if important things happen in murder in the previous year, the Washington Post already reported on it. So why do we need to do this? Um, these are the dates that uh, we uh, get campaign filings from the presidential candidates, like you know, in the past six months or so. They're also, shockingly, the dates that we write stories about those campaign finances. I hope you see where I'm going here, because schedules are good, sort of. Schedules can be good. But when you get locked into a schedule, as a journalism organization, you end up sort of making decisions or rather just sort of seeding decisions to the schedule and not actually breaking out of that. Let me introduce you to Dave Loebsack, a con uh, Iowa congressman, and the Teamsters Union. The Teamsters Union, uh, like many big, large political organizations, they don't wake up one morning and say, who am I going to give money to today? They do this every year, often on the same dates every year. It's predictable. But in 2011 to 2012, they loaded up on Loebsack early. Well, why was that? Well, first of all, did I notice? No. Di who did notice? I don't know. Maybe someone, anyone. Who knows? But was it news? Charlie Rangel was the uh, chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee, and uh, until he wasn't the chairman of the House Ways and Means Committee. Um, and so he resigned in uh, March of 2010. And so here's the, what happened here. So before that, Charlie's friends, meaning the people who gave Charlie money, were people who care about taxes. Charlie got a lot of money for that. And so... Uh, you know, he gets a lot of money from uh, all kinds of different contributors, uh, different political action committees, like Northwestern Mutual Insurance, to pick one. They gave money to Charlie Rangel every year, like clockwork, almost always in the month of June, like clockwork. And then, when scandal sort of approaches to Charlie Rangel and he decides, ah, I can't really be a chairman of the committee anymore, where's Northwestern Mutual? Hello? Hello? Anyone here? No, they're all gone. They all drop off the face of the earth. No more contributions for Charlie. Charlie's forced to go begging from his colleagues in Congress. But we knew that would happen, sort of, but we didn't really see it happen. And we didn't catch it as it happened, and we even reported it as it happened. We're very good at journalists, as journalists at spotting things that happen, at covering events. We, have, we need to get good, better, at spotting things that don't happen when we expect them to. So we need canaries. Uh, canaries are great because they serve a very useful purpose. You train them, you know, don't, when you die, uh, let's get out of the mine. Uh, the problem is you can train reporters how to sort of think like this and act like this, but then they leave or they change beats. What we really need are a set of rules, a system, a systematic way to approach this problem. <laughs> Heuristics, in other words. We need to get it so that we only get notified when something happens that we want to know about. So some areas that this could apply to, crime, weather, sports, legislation, election, schools, so many things operate on a schedule, on a pattern. And all we have to do, in addition to looking for what happens, is look for what doesn't happen. Uh, sports information departments and the folks at ESPN are really good at this. If you've ever covered sports, you're, like, they have these things that they just give you uh, two seconds after the game ends. It's like, oh, by the way, this is the first time this has happened since you know, 1943. And it's like, how do you know that? Well, guess what? You have rules that you set up. You look for things. You, you know your patterns. So here's what I'm trying to do these days. I'm trying to take that knowledge and the calendar and put them together. I'm going to make up some rules. I'm going to test them. And then, uh, you know, stories, hopefully. So like the delivery, the notification process, that's not the problem. We know how to notify ourselves of things, right? That's not the problem. The problem is the system. We need to figure out how to build a system that tells us when things don't happen. We need to get better at that. <laughs> Thank you very much.